All right, Cherubs, right now we're looking at Raphael's The School of Athens. Let's start by identifying some characters. All right, that's not going to work. Let's focus on just these two central characters, Plato and Aristotle. Plato holds his book, The Timaeus, and Aristotle carries his book, The Ethics. Plato points upwards, and Aristotle motions towards the ground. These two represent two dominant forms of philosophy in Western thought. Plato points upwards as a reference to his ideal forms. For Plato, mankind should focus its intellectual energy on those things comprehensible by the human mind. Our senses, our body, is flawed, and earthly things are temporary. A triangle built in the physical world could never be perfect, and it's destined to crumble. The ideal triangle, however, has properties and patterns that are as true for the Egyptians as they are for us. This is why the entrance of Plato's school, the Academy, had the warning, let none ignorant of geometry enter here. Aristotle motions towards the earth. He was less concerned with ideal forms and more concerned with the physical world. Today we would call Aristotle a scientist for his exploration of the physical world and ability to categorize huge amounts of information in easily understood ways. These two enter a room with many different philosophers from many different time periods. We have Greek philosophers like Epicurus alongside Arab philosophers like Averroes. These are the greatest teachers of all time and many of them were mathematicians. Here we have Pythagoras and here we have Euclid who wrote the greatest textbook on geometry ever. Seriously, look it up. And here we have the sole woman in the painting, Hypatia of Alexandria, who died in the year 415 CE. While you're at it, you should probably look her up too. One of the most interesting things in this painting is Raphael's use of real models. This isn't just Plato. It's Leonardo da Vinci. This isn't just Euclid. It's the architect Bramante. This isn't just the philosopher Heraclitus. It's Michelangelo Buonarroti. And this guy back here, that's not just the legendary Greek painter Apelles, that's Raphael giving himself a shout out among the most impressive brains in human history. One of the things that separates the Renaissance from the medieval period is its belief in itself. Raphael illustrates that by placing real Italians, people he knew and worked with, as stand-ins for the great thinkers of the past. They didn't simply study these men, they were equal in greatness to them. Which brings me to this next part. Though very few of these philosophers are Roman, the painting appears in a Roman space. The architecture around these characters is not Athenian, despite its name, it's Roman. Throughout history, certain cities have been considered the protectors of human knowledge. Athens in the 4th century BCE, for example. Alexandria, Constantinople. And this painting asserts that in the 1500s, that city is Rome. How do I know it's Roman? Well, you can just watch part two.